is Dallas McLean from Biohackers Magazine. We are here at the Biohacking Congress in Miami. I'm here with Mr. Matt Dawson, the CEO of True Diagnostic. Matt, welcome. Thanks for taking the time today. Thank you. Excited to talk to you. Yes, sir. Excited to get into some fun stuff. So tell me in a nutshell what the mission of True Diagnostic is and how you came to this mission. Sure. Yeah. I think when we think about biohacking in general, we all want to live longer and live healthier. But to be able to do that, we really need biomarkers to tell us how we're doing when it comes to aging specifically. So that's what we focus on right now at True Diagnostic is biological age testing. So we have biological age tests, we also have biological pace of aging tests, and then we're coming out with some really exciting things as well that I'm happy to talk about that we'll be launching in a few weeks, which are um, different, uh, much more advanced, uh, but also along the same mission and just giving people data to go to optimize their health. And for those that may not know, what's the difference, or how would you describe the difference between biological age and chronological age? For sure. Yeah, chrono chronological age is easy. Look at your license <laughs> and, and you know how old you are, how many birthdays you've had. There you go. Biologic age is um, about your health uh, and how you're performing and feeling and your risk of disease and mortality. So mortality and morbidity. And that's what we measure. That's what matters. We all know 80 year olds who look and perform like they're 60 or 40 year olds who look and perform like they're 60. So we're looking at that, what is your biologic age? Because that's what you really want to optimize. You want to slow your rate of aging so that you can live as long as you can, as healthy as you can. Right, and not just add years to your life, but add quality to the years right. of life, right? Yeah, I have no interest in extending someone's lifespan if they're just going to be old longer or miserable. It's about improving your life later and improving it now as well. Slowing down aging, now aging age is the number one risk factor for every chronic yes. disease. Um, people don't really talk about that very much because we thought, well, we can't really measure it or do anything about it, but we can. Yeah. Yeah. And there's two sides to the aging. There's, you know, those things that can accelerate the aging, you know, the free radicals and, and the toxins that we, you know, incorporate into our bodies. But how do you guys track the, the good amount of elements in the body and the biomarkers? What, what are the significant biomarkers people should look for? Sure. So, so just to speak really quickly about the biologic age tests we have, and then I'll talk about what the research shows is the best things to lower it. So we, there are a ton of biological age clocks out there. Um, most of them, uh, I think, don't really tell you what we really want to know. The way to really test in a robust way is through epigenetics and DNA methylation. So everyone understands that genetics is the genes you have, but that's only 20% of your health outcome. The other 80% is how you express those genes. Yes. So to test biologic age, we look at about a million gene sites, how much each one is turned up and turned down. So gene expression. And from that, we can tell you your biologic age or your pace of aging. So there's three tests that we really like. One developed by Harvard, called the Omic MH test. It's best at predicting your mortality. There's a test that Yale developed called Symphony Age, and it tells you your organ system's age. So we, we age in a very, very heterogeneous way. Our brains, hearts, liver age at different rates. I see that. So your organ systems. So that's yeah. a really nice test to have. And then my favorite is the Dunning Pace, the Pace test. And this was developed by Duke. And it gives you a rate of aging. So you'll get, an a, you'll get a score from like 0.6 to 1.4, with 1.0 meaning you're aging normally, like for your, your regular cohort okay. you're in. Yeah. The cool thing about this test is it's very sensitive to change and intervention. So for example, if you get pregnant, which is a physiologic stress, your rate of aging goes up to like 1.2, 20% increase. Mm -hmm. And then when you deliver, it comes back down. Same thing if you get COVID, car accident, hip surgery, your rate of aging goes up, it right. comes back down when you get better. So as a clinician, I'm a physician, and this allows me to do really cool N of one experiments. For example, you want to optimize your diet. So Stanford did a study, a twin study, looking at omnivore versus vegan diets, and they'd take these twins, and they'd switch them back and forth over eight weeks. And they looked at, they used this test, and they found that in eight weeks, you could change your pace of aging. So you can find, like, try a keto, a carnivore, a vegan diet, try these, and see which one decreases your rate of aging the most. If you come to me as a patient and say, I want to do IV stem cells and stem cells in Panama. It's going to be fifty thousand dollars. Well, let's see if it works. Let's yeah. do a pace of aging before Based and a pacing aging afterwards. And so you could really hone in on decreasing your rate of aging doing these rapamycin or synolytics or whatever you want to try. Right. Have an objective marker to test. So that's the favorite test that, that I have. Now, you ask the question, what decreases rate of aging? So we we've, we've looked at that. Yale is getting ready to publish a big interventional study to see what things do. The good news is it's the things that we already think and know, like exercise, lifestyle, uh, stuff. lifestyle stuff, sleep, stress reduction, 
plays a big role. So it, it's those in general. But to me, it's not about what works to reduce aging. It's what works to reduce your aging. Yeah. That's why I like the pace test. It allows people to figure that out themselves. Not a one size fits all approach. It's definitely not. My prior company I founded is called Wild Health, a precision medicine company. We look at genomics and a ton of other things to optimize. And we found that people need very different diets, very different exercise routines for them. And we would design that based on their DNA and blood work. What the PACE test allows you to do is, is test that out and actually see what works to optimize your rate of aging. Very interesting. So in, in our, a question comes to mind then in our paradigm that we're kind of trapped in with the industrialized medicine, industrialized food and everything, how can people really hone in on getting the good nutrients that they need to get and getting away from the preservatives that have been linked to, in many cases, some of these chronic diseases that stem from inflammation. Are, are you guys also implementing some type of suggestion thing that comes along with the test to say, hey, maybe this biomarker is giving us information that you need to maybe cut out some of these preservatives that could be causing this or? Yeah, I feel like you just set me up perfectly for what I said is the <laughs> next thing. That's okay, great. So um, I, I like the PACE test because you can do these experiments. You can try the different diets and things, mm -hmm. but knowing why you're aging faster or slower degrades that information on that. Sure. So um, Harvard, so a few years ago, let me back up real quick. Mm -hmm. This epigenetics and looking at a million gene sites and how you express it, you get so much information from that. You can tell the biological age, you can tell other things too. Yeah. So we've heard of the gallery test from Grail. Yeah. For food to catch so the same thing, they're looking at gene expression. When you get cancer, you express your genes differently so you can find the fingerprint of what a cancer looks like. Mm -hmm. So um, a few years ago, someone named Marioni did a study where you could predict someone's CRP level from these epigenetics their inflammatory, whole body inflammatory levels. Okay. And then he said, well, how good is this predicted CRP? And he compared it to a normal CRP uh, for cognitive impairment. See how they correlate, because you know, inflammation leads to cognitive impairment. Mm -hmm. And he found that the predicted one, the epigenetics performed better than like the lab core version of CRP. Really interesting, like an upgraded CRP, which makes sense because CRP bounces around just like glucose would. Sure. And so we care more about A1C instead of glucose. This is like a biologic average of CRP over time. It's okay. a really cool thing. Okay. So we decided to do a study with Harvard. They have a hundred thousand patient biobank. They said, could we find a few more of these biomarkers that are like upgraded versions? We found 1600. So we're coming out with a, a test in a few weeks. We'll launch it um, to where there's the same as epigenetics. We can tell so many things like your vitamins and minerals like vitamin A, D, C, new minerals, things like that tell this so an incredible amount of more information so now when you get your biologic age and pace of aging and also see like well, what's probably causing it do you have elevated markers of like glyphosate and certain toxins mm -hmm. or are you low on certain vitamins and minerals so now you have some direction to do those in a one test as well right like where should i focus my nutrition on for example yeah that's so important i feel like because you want to find out not just how you're doing but how do you get better and everything? So are you guys partnering with certain brands or certain things that you guys trust, or is it just purely informational of what they should do at a high level? Yeah, initially it's it's informational. Like we're not selling the supplements from what you're, sure. it, because that's just not what we do. We want to give the data in an unbiased way. Right. I'm sure a lot of brands who do personalized nutrition or supplements will want to use this. Sure. Um, and, and sure, we'll partner with them to do the testing, but we won't right. make, we'll, we'll say, um, you need to take vitamin D, vitamin C, whatever. We won't say take this brand. Right. right there. But it doesn't mean that you wouldn't offer your test on some platforms and to give information to people and then they take that information and then maybe the platform can say, hey, based on your test, here's some supplements that maybe could Absolutely. Have no, we're 100% we're happy to do that. And we and so the test will be available right now. The test is true age that we sell that has Omic M8, Symphony 8, Zorgan System, and the, and the PACE test. Sure. This will be true health. Um, and it, we're launching on November 4th. Very cool. Um, and so we'll be selling that just through truediagnostic.com, both of those. And I'm sure a lot of brands that, that do sell supplements and things will want to, to do that on their platform. I love that. We're open to that. And talking a little bit about your physician yourself, so in the medical field, are you starting to see a trend of people that are request not only requesting these types of tests that are a little bit different than the typical medical test but also doctors that are starting to say hey maybe you should try out this test 100 percent. We, we i think we have around four thousand physicians right now to wow. use our true age test with their patients uh, to, just like what i talked about to optimize rate of aging 
and I'm sure all those same physicians will want to offer the, the true health as well. Right. Um, there are great doctors out there who understand we need to go further the traditional medicine and people that are demanding it. Like I think the consumer is driving this a lot. They're saying the traditional medicine is not good enough. It definitely not. It definitely has its place, but it should be as, mm-hmm. as the word is a holistic approach, you know, yeah. like are people doing the right lifestyle changes? So um, looking at the data, not just of an individual, but the metadata, what are you guys seeing in terms of averages of people that are doing these tests? Like, is there certain areas where you see the general population has problems with or is doing well in? What what would you say there? Yeah, I mean, the way the tests are designed um, is like the the pace of aging, like the average is is 1.0. Okay. Um, And so what we've seen, like the people who take our test are a lot more concerned about their health. And so they tend to have a little better mm-hmm. results. Makes sense, yeah. um, but we see when people start doing the tests routinely over time, the way the tests are designed is really to be done like once a quarter. So you can you can follow. And when people do that, I mean, we know the old adage, what gets measured gets managed. Like when people are looking at folks on it, it does get better over time. Right. Because um, they can see the effect of the things that they're doing. So we see when people are working with a holistic physician and measuring this over time, um, it does improve and get better. Beautiful. And where can people generally go just to find out more about True Diagnostic and True Health that's coming out? Um, and how can they order a test not only for themselves, but look at ordering a test for maybe their clinics or their yeah. loved ones? Yeah, just to truediagnostic.com. That's where the True Age test is sold now. That's where the True Health test will be sold also um, in the next couple of weeks and everything is there. Awesome, okay. Was there anything else you'd like to tell the beautiful people watching? That's great. Uh, no, nope, nothing. Okay. Appreciate well, it. Everyone go out, see what type of biomarkers you have. Check out True Diagnostic. We're signing off here from the Biohacking um, World, Biohackers World event in Miami. So everyone have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Matt.